Showing 71% right now. Hey, what's up guys? As most of you probably already know, I don't often do review style videos. I much prefer to just build random projects and show you things that interest me. But on occasion, I will do a review if it's something that really interests me and I really want. And in the case of today's power station, it's something I've been thinking about getting for a while now with the craziness of the world. I figured having a portable power station on hand would be great not only on camping trips but perhaps in a power outage scenario so that's what i'm going to do today i'm going to show you this uh, blue eddy ac 200p uh, in the shop in the house and on a whole random variety of things so let's go in the shop i'll talk to you about it and then we'll start testing it So here is the portable power station that I'm going to be testing out today. This is the Blue Eddy AC200P. And I think what I'll do in this video, first I'll just go over the features and components of this power station. And then after that, I will go through a whole host of random things to test it on, like some tools here in the shop, like my welder, chop saw, table saw. And then I will take it inside the house, show it in use on some of my appliances, like my fridge and freezer, in more of that power outage scenario where you might want to have something like this. And then I will also uh, use it in some ways that I plan on using it with my DIY travel trailer project uh, for some of our extended camping trips to power some of those uh, maybe not so necessary items, but definitely nice to have items. So now I'll just give you a quick rundown on the specs of this. It has a total of 2000 watts output capacity and it has a 90% depth of discharge, meaning you can utilize almost all of the power you have stored in the battery bank portion of this. The on off switch is just located right here in the upper corner and this will power a touchable LCD screen where you can monitor the power of the station, your inputs like solar panels or a wall charger, as well as select between DC power and AC power. It has a total of 17 output uh, sources. So these are all your uh, AC power sources. You have uh, USB and USB-C sources, as well as your 12 volt socket sources. And then over here, you have another 12 volt source where you can uh, link this up with another power station or an expansion battery pack for even more amp hours of power. Um, and then it's got two wireless uh, uh, I guess, you know, for wireless cell phones and, and tablets and things like that. I don't have any of those, so I'm not going to be using this. But if you did, you can charge them simply by putting them on the top. And then it has its input sources here and here. Uh, so this is where you would hook up your solar panels or your wall charger or your car charger. Uh, there's a total of five different ways to charge this up. And I think that is pretty much it. Let me see if there's anything I'm missing. Um, their uh, ratings says this will charge from zero to 100% on a wall charger in about two and a half hours, as well as if you attach all of the full solar panel array, uh, it will also charge it up in about two and a half hours. Um, and, but I will show that in a little bit when I get all the solar panels out. So I think now I'm gonna show you the solar panel setup and then I'll get on to testing this. And here is a quick look at the little packable solar panel. It's kind of set up like a little suitcase. It has a fabric outer shell. And then just with these clips, it unfolds into four separate solar panels. And you can see right here, these are the legs of the solar panel. They can be adjusted with these little fabric straps to get whatever angle you want. And then in this little package right here are where all your cables are that connect to the power station. So overall, a very nice uh, tight setup. Uh, so anyway, I'll show you this a uh, little later on when I show how this charges with the solar panels. But I think now we will get on to testing some tools. Hey 
And now for the first test, I'm gonna max this thing out with five different tools and a charging battery. You can see I have everything plugged in there and currently it is 98%. So I'm gonna run them for about five minutes and kind of see what the percentage is after that. Just got grinder, belt sander, belt sander, drill press, and my chop saw. So I just shut all the tools down and that was actually closer to 10 total minutes. The battery display is now at 89%. So you definitely couldn't run these for hours on end, but I think that's pretty good considering I had everything running and it was able to keep up with all of those tools drawing off it at the same time. And for the next test, we're gonna see if this thing will power my welder. You can see it's plugged in and it is at the 89% we left it off with the other test. And it is not plugged into anything else. So we will see if it will power the welder. Um, not that you would necessarily use something like this to weld with on a long term basis. But say you had to make a repair or two and you had a power outage. So let's give it a shot. And we'll see where the battery has gone down to. Oh, wow. Well, it shows it only went down to 88%. You can see I didn't really do a whole lot of welding, but perhaps for a small repair or two, something like this might uh, do the trick. And looks like the power went down 1%. So couldn't run that all day, but you could definitely make several cuts. That was three quarter inch ply. And now we're inside my house for what I would consider is really the more important test, a power outage scenario. I've got it hooked up to my fridge and it has been running for about 2 hours and 15 minutes and it's still got 91% left. So if I, if I factor that in for the 90% depth of discharge, I think that'll get me about 17 or so hours and that is right in line with what the instructions say that this is supposed to run a refrigerator like this for. I think we've opened the doors about 6 or 7 times to kind of mimic normal usage and uh, I think what I'll do now is unplug it and put it on my deep freezer and now we're out in the garage where my chest freezer is located this is where we store quite a bit of extra food from butcher box stuff to game meats and everything in between even a little bit of ice cream so obviously this is pretty important and really is the one that I would plug this power station into first uh, because it just uh, is a little bit more efficient than a refrigerator since it's a chest freezer and I'm really interested to see how long this will go. I plugged it in at the 91%. I don't know if that will show up with a reflection, but uh, plugged it in at 91% and I will come back in two or three or four hours and see how it's doing. Eighty-five percent. So it is at eighty-five percent right now, and it's been out here for about maybe two and a half hours. So that is a six percent drop from the ninety-one percent that I had when I started this set. 
So if I just do a little bit of head math, 6% uh, drop um, divided into say 85 for a safety uh, factor for that 90% depth of discharge, that's gonna go in about maybe 13, 14 times, something like that. And if I multiply that by two and a half hours, that should get me, uh, I don't know, at least 30 hours. So I think this is going to do really well. It is winter time, so obviously this chest freezer is not working quite as hard as it might normally. But I think that is gonna be a pretty good uh, deal for this. And then obviously if I hook up the solar panels, I could probably go for quite a while with it. test out the power station with my DIY travel trailer project uh, to power some of those things that I never really had the confidence to power with the smaller 12 volt setup that I put in it already. Uh, so anyway, let's go inside the trailer and test out a few things. So now we're in my tiny little DIY travel trailer and one of the things my wife would really like to do is be able to use her electric kettle for making tea. Uh, something she does at home, but this is a 1500 watt kettle, boils water really quickly, uh, but I never really wanted to take it on camping trips and uh, tax the 12 volt system in here. So anyway, with the power station, I'll give it a shot. It's at 85%, we'll see how much it drops down to, and uh, then we'll get on to something else. All right, so it's on right now, getting close to boiling the water. And you can see right up here on the display, it is registering about 1400 watts. And it actually started at 84% and it just went down to 83 and now 82. So we'll see how much it draws it down before the water is boiling. Okay, so this boiled about a quart and a half worth of water in, I don't know, just about three minutes. And the readout is displaying 80% now. So definitely way less efficient with something like this. Um, actually a bit more draw than I thought, but it is a 1500 watt kettle. So now we'll get on to uh, Instapot or something like that. And now I'm gonna test out my wife's other favorite appliance, which is the Instapot. I'm sure this is probably gonna be the same thing since it's uh, generating heat and it is pretty high draw, but we'll see what uh, happens. I got a, uh, just some water in here to mimic uh, cooking a couple of cups of rice and uh, we'll see how much it draws it down. And the uh, display is registering about 78% right now. So we'll see how long it, or how much it draws it down. So the power draw phase is finished on the rice pressure cooker setting that my wife likes to use. And right now it is just counting up to 10 minutes uh, using the residual heat in the pressure cooker. And the percentage went down from 78% down to 73%. So it's showing that no power is being drawn right now, so I don't anticipate it drawing down anymore, but I don't know, it's gonna be about a 5% drawdown to do two cups of rice. And you can see by the vent cap, it is hot and ready to go. And there we go, it's totally finished. Move that around and bleed it off. Pretty hot and steamy. Easy as that. So for the last real kind of test of this power station, I'm gonna see how quickly it will charge up off of the three optional solar panels that you can get with this. Uh, I have them connected in series. Each one of these is a 200 watt solar panel 
and you're not going to be able to see the display but currently it is registering about 500 watts of input charging power and it was just under 75 percent uh, so I'm just going to time it and see how long it takes to get from 75 percent up to 100 uh, percent the uh, literature that uh, comes with the power station says it'll do about two and a half hours from fully discharged to fully charged if you use all three panels but uh, we'll see what actually happens and I will also include um, some footage of just setting up one solar panel uh, just because I'm guessing that would probably be what most people would more commonly use versus having all three of these. I think you might be able to see the display now. See 500 watts coming in from the solar panel and it is 96% um, and it's been, I don't know, maybe about 30 to 35 minutes. So it seems like that two to two and a half hour charging range is going to be pretty accurate. But that is considering you are using all three of these solar panels. And I'm guessing if you just use one, it will be about the thir a third the time. Okay, so it has been officially 35 minutes and it's about 99% charged. So I would say that the two to two and a half hour range that they state for using three panels is pretty accurate. I actually thought it would be a little bit slower because it was only showing 500 watts of input when technically you've got 600 watts uh, coming from the panels but I'm no solar expert so anyway I think that's pretty decent And I think the last little test I'll do is running some sort of medical device like an oxygen generator or a CPAP machine. The only thing I have on hand is this little nebulizer. Uh, so I'll probably run this for like maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, you know, say somebody had asthma or something like that and needed to take it. And we'll see what it drops. It's showing 71% right now. So it's been 10 minutes and it dropped from 71% to now 67%. So I think that's pretty decent. So we'll get on to the next thing. Okay, well I think that is pretty much going to conclude the testing of this power station. So what are my thoughts and conclusions on its usefulness and value and all those kind of things? Well, uh, <laughs> as is the answer for many things in life, it highly depends on your personal situation. Uh, number one, I would say for a person who has medical needs at home, uh, perhaps they uh, have a couple of liters of oxygen from an oxygen generator, and it would really behoove them to be able to have that generator going even if you had a small power outage, or perhaps you're a person with asthma or something like that where you need a nebulizer. I think this is really an invaluable thing to have in your house. Um, just to be able to get you through those, uh, albeit rare, but sometimes power outages that we all experience from time to time. Um, in the case of, say, someone who wants to run tools, uh, as I showed you here, um, I think perhaps for a traveling handyman, it could be really nice as a uh, convenience aspect. Obviously, if you're doing work for other people, a lot of times they will have power on site. But if they don't and you had a trailer that you have kind of uh, made up into a pseudo uh, wood shop, it'd be kind of nice to have something like this, just a plug and play. And then uh, for the camping aspect that I kind of demonstrated with our travel trailer, well, that is just purely convenience and to have this is nice. But you know, when you're going out in the woods and camping, shoot, I've been camping my whole life just in a tent and a, a little campfire to heat up coffee and, and uh, food. You really don't need it for something like that, but it sure does make it nice to do uh, some of those little things that I showed you with like the Instapot and things like that, 
we usually go camping for a week or two at a time uh, so it is nice to do some of those little periphery things but anyway I think it is a pretty cool setup with the solar panels as well uh, everything worked seamlessly but it is a significant investment if you decided to invest in something like this but like I said depending on your situation my door is blowing closed um, depending on your situation it may uh, be a big benefit to you to have something like this so anyway if you like this give me a thumbs up let me know in the comments if you had any other ideas for a power station such as this and uh, as always stay tuned for similar content and I don't know what I'm going to see you on the next time but I do have my travel trailer parked out here because I have the final two kind of big projects that I'm going to be working on the awning and an out outdoor shower setup so see you guys